scores a goal. Can you believe it? It's extraordinary. Long time since these teams have played in a final. 1993 wow. it was. Gee, I played that one. And the bounce, well, I'm surprised they didn't recall that. They had twice as many as Glenelg so far. They've got it on their terms. This is Billy Frampton. He's going short as well. Laddams takes the mark. Looks to play on. Hayes back in the goal square. They're heading that direction now. Tall Timber about to approach. Marshall! Couldn't miss this. Comes in from 15 out and makes no mistake. Port Adelaide draw first blood here. It took more than two and a half minutes. Came from Corcoran. Here he is, the goal kicker, Marshall. And there's the whistle from the umpire. It's going to be oh, down field. That. That's 25. It is. 25 metres as well. That's right on it, Timmy. Well, it's it's just uh, happened. Had a tough game last week. Billy Frampton had to go head to head against Andy Otten. So he will be absolutely itching Big Billy to get this one through. Start on the right note. He's kicked 32 goals for the season. He's the number one goal kicker for the Magpies, and he puts it through. So this is Brad McCarthy dispossessed in the tackle. Virgin, quick kick, Snook, didn't go required distance, he was taken high, free kick going the way of Matty Snook and a chance for Glenelg to open their account. Oh, why don't you just write him off, John? Trying the reverse <laughs> commentator's curse here for Matty Snook, Glenelg need a steadier, He's and he it. delivers! Tigers get there first. At right half back. Looks up towards centering. Marshall arriving, crashes the pack. Crashes oh, my man. His own player has gone down. Laddams takes another hit as Bradley measures the pass, and it's a good one. And he finds Reynolds, 55 out. Lead comes now, turning around. They fire the ball in, and how about that? Liam McBean takes the mark. McBean, 46 goals, 19 this season to win the Ken Farmer medal. He also won the Jim Frosty Miller medal for the leading goal kicker in the VFL. He was playing with Richmond. The other Tigers, he lights it off the boot. And Glenelg are in front for the first time in the game. Boyd, Boyd Woodcock, his contest. And they finished 1-2 on the ladder, these teams, and it's looking like a battle between the top two, isn't it? Well, under pressure Kick. there. Did well to get it away. Jesse White. Nicholson followed it up. Now he's got Motlop. Mackenzie lurking. Motlop takes the mark, though. Did that well against a very good opponent. Melbourne's out of East, all Big Australian. Ball. As an under-18, Tim, he's, looks like he's going to have a huge future. As Curran misses what he'd normally take. Johnson back in the side, gives it to Mays. Little flick over the top. Davidson, here's Sutcliffe on the little inside-out kick. Here's Farrell. We know he's got a great goal sense on the left boot. Kane Farrell scores. Terrific finish. Lop. And his kick is a good one to advantage of McBean. Getting across was McKenzie. Did that well. Lena picks it up. Hewitt in a bit of trouble. Works his way back to Garner. Just a little chip up. Big slap from McBean. And he, he may well get a free kick here. I think he is the umpire that was further away from the players. Come in. Pluck that from the middle of the ground. The free kick's going to go to McBean against Garner. Just thought the... Uh... Didn't stop him kicking beautifully before in that first term. Uh, the former Richmond Tiger had a year off last year and his kick yeah. looks pretty good. Steered it through the middle and it's a great kick. Bays back in front. And they've got it on their terms at the moment here. The Tigers, albeit a one-point lead in a seesawing affair. Look at the palm work from Jesse White. Just straight down to Brad Agnew, who races out of the centre. Scott the target, couldn't get there. Ball hits the deck. Lenelg with numbers around it. Port with some defending to do. That was intelligent work from Sutcliffe. Crashes into Scott. Ball comes out of the back. Darcy Bailey with a chance, and he kicks the goal. Two in a minute here for the Tigers, who open up a seven-point lead there when they did take intercept marks. Agnew with it. Well, he sold Jesse White oh, into trouble. They're in a clash heads. of heads. Marshall and Jesse White both collapsed to the deck here. Yeah. And he looks a little second-hand here, Jesse White, and so does Marshall, who's barely moved. So, concern for both players here. You'll see Marshall come in from behind. Oh, that's a conk, isn't it? And right to the right temple there. Oh. Marshall, very groggy, is going to be helped off the ground. Jesse White says he wants to stay out there at the moment. Going back, a little bump from oh, Togan Cox. Farrell just holds on to it long enough to draw Mays as a runner going past. His kick is very, very good to advantage. Here we go. Davidson, can he get around Gould? Get some support? 
Johnson into the side today, coming oh, back from mark. suspension. And Mays in the gully just grabs it out of the air nicely. Pretty much straight in front, 30 out. This is to get Port back within a point, and he does it, finishes clinically. Billy, strong finals mark, that one. The kick for Sutcliffe had to be precise, and it was. Running past McKenzie, one loads, goes for distance. He's got them running back here under pressure. Curran had it knocked away by Aiden Johnson, and he's going to march into the open goal and put Port Adelaide back on top. What at the moment, others. Scott, third in line there, couldn't mark the ball. This is Bradley, bustled off it. In comes Bailey, look away hand pass to Reynolds, who gets it back from Darcy Bailey. Bailey went for wide instead. He needs to be good here, and he is. Blind turn was excellent now, looking for McBean. Oh, he held off McKenzie, took the grab as well, and Liam McBean will go back with a chance to kick his third. Including today, he's kicked goals in 15 of the 18 games that he's played this season, McBean. Farmer medalist, this for his third. And to put Glenelg back in front, he says, yes, sir. Tigers on top. You were thinking intensity from the game we saw a little earlier as Laddams takes it out of the ruck, gets the clearing kick. It's a foot race, Virgin and Woodcock, but it comes to Johnson. He's got time to spin oh, wow. around. It looks like a good kick. Oh, he loves it too. He's got the wings out, enjoying it. to Sammy Mays and he puts it out in the direction of Tobin Cox reaching around there was Joseph there's an opportunity now for Nicholson from outside 50 goes low and hard McBean in the right position nearly had a couple of bites at it he's got Corcoran to deal with oh, finally gets rid of him gives it off to Reynolds and he's missed from wow. around about two meters out he missed everything. That was the uh, strange thing. I think he kicked it too hard too, Sadie. Just watch this on the replay. Kicks this really hard. He just had to dribble it along the ground. Did a restart. Look at the distance towards centre wing. Frampton in the contest. Here's Laddams close to the boundary line. Keeps it alive. Mays, who started in number 34, now wearing number three. Had, to, had some blood across it. Sutcliffe did well against McCarthy there. Likewise, Davidson, who got it to Trengove. Hack it forward at the moment. Here's Laddams. He gets the kick away before Bradley can get there. Curran going back. This is Willem Drew at the back. He's got the finish. He gets the goal. And Port Adelaide extend their lead out to 13 points. There he is, Matty Locken, in the middle of coaching this game. He's very happy to have a chat. We really appreciate the access from the Port Adelaide Football Club. And his side now 13 points up. We're 11, nearly 12 minutes into this third term. Willem Drew, the only goal kicker in the third quarter, except now Marlon Motlop comes in, shucks it and puts it through for the base. Partington, 13 disposals for Partington, so they've quietened him down. He had nine at quarter time, Partington, so he's been largely influential. Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe for the boundary line, came up with a little bit of magic for the Magpies to give him the biggest lead of the game. From Ellsworthy, now in turn Atley. Farrell, good tackle from close, should've drags gone. him down, and he's holding the ball. Should have, should have given that ball off. Needed to be first give, and it's a terrific tackle. Motlop coming through, he's done well. Marlon with a little kick. Oh, what a goal! He may have kicked that goal. I think McKenzie got through it. That is a huge goal for Marlon Motlop. Just magical. He's already kicked one this term. Oh, that was unbelievable. It's something out of nothing, which, as you were saying, so to late in the quarter, this would be a really important goal if they could get it. And that was incredible. There was no real daylight here as he's just been able to swing that through. He's got to dodge two Port Adelaide players, and he's done exactly that. Not a lot on offer in terms of forward, so he just drives for distance at the mm, moment. Three on to one. a nest of Tigers. Oh, oh they've got him one another's way. It trickles out the back, and Aiden Johnson thinks it's his birthday. He gets the easy goal, and Port Adelaide extend the margin back to 15 points. Had a good game so far. Moves it out a little wider. This is Will Gould. Nice kick for Close, who's up on the charging lead from half forward. Now Scott's calling for it out wide. Gets to it now. Snook running past. 
Bradley kept running up to the forward line. He's available, but Scott's looking beyond that. He's looking for Liam McBean, who comes out one-handed. Partington floundered on the deck. He was bustled over trying to get close, goes off the ground. Just to start, the Tigers need it as Brad Close comes up with a finish to kick his first goal. Big contest, just a little toe poke out by Partington. Allowed Close to get the left boot to it. A terrific off-the-ground goal. Gives the Bay some daylight on the National Pharmacy's optical replay. 11,500 today in poorer conditions weather-wise. Nicholson with a free kick. Gets it out wide. Gregson knocks him board. Nice pass for Agnew. Got some momentum going at the moment. The Tigers, this is Partington. Oh, neat kick looking for Reynolds, who had to be brave, and he was. They've got numbers over the top. Reynolds, who slow hand passes, open the door for the Magpies here. Bailey gets it onwards, and Josh Scott was intelligent to kick it almost out of midair for the goal. It's two in a row for the Tigers. Game on. They put uh, Tom Marshall behind the ball as well. Oh, that's a bad knock. Here's Partington, lifting in the occasion. Likes it off the boot. Tigers are back in front for the first time since the second quarter. Just a big punch into the corridor. Luke Partington just waiting on it and spins it around and kicks a magnificent goal for his team and puts the Tigers in front. They kick three in a row. Port Adelaide yet to score a goal in this last turn. Went straight to Bradley. His kick, though, has been marked here by Tom Corcoran. And he threaded the needle there as he found Joe Attlee, who kicks quickly. Wanted at the back, Billy Frampton. He gets there just before. Keeps it alive. Some sort of trick from Billy Frampton. And Marshall puts the icing on the cake. Magpies back on top. His kick's a good one, too. Willem Drew. Said plenty of it today, Drew. 20 touches. 21 coming, 10 tackles to complement those possessions. And the march taken Fox. by Cox. Well, last week, when he was struggling in front of goal, he took a runner that was probably about 40 metres long. This time, this one isn't anywhere near as far. And this kick is absolutely spot on. They're out by 10 points, the Maggies. We're in the time on. White works his way to the front. Laddams knocks it down. Sutcliffe and Partington. Suckcliffe now taking the front position. Partington takes it out. Good little land ball. Gives it to Bradley, the former skipper. Couple of quick steps. Gets the kick up. They need something. Reynolds! The umpire's played it. He's got it. It was a big go at it. And Monlock takes it and goes. But I think the mark's taken by Reynolds. He's got to bring it back. Just as they needed something. Have a look at him. Big fly over the top of Garner, Tim. Well, I'll tell you what. There's probably not a lot of time left, so this was absolutely vital for him and the team's opportunity to get in a grand final. Luke Reynolds, just a one point so far today from right on 50. He needs it to go all the way, and he's kicked it. So they're within three points now, Glenelg. They're a kick away from getting themselves into a grand final. And another great advertisement of why do you need a count up clock rather than count down. We don't know how long there is to go. Port Adelaide going forward, taking the mark. Cox, oh, no, no, the no, play no. on. That's umpire hard. says play on. That's a t terrible decision. Agnew dragged down, almost slammed into the deck by Joe Attlee. The umpire comes in and says, I'll have it. Just watch his hands. That's all Cox. Yeah, that's Mark. Yeah, that's, that's a howler. 28 minutes played. Straight kick the difference here. Well, straight kick would win it, in fact, for Glenelg. They're down by three points. Cox gets it across. Kick came there from Willem Drew. Hayes working against, almost getting to the back of Max Proud. And Curran slides across the line. So the margin is four points, but Glenelg can restart. And they run it forward. Well, the torpedo, though, was off the side of the boot. Mark taken by Farrell, and they'll slow it down. He says, I'm having a shot. I'm not sure about that one, Soda. Um, I, I, oh, there's the siren, too. A shot, but it won't matter. It's just going to let it bounce and go wherever. But Port Adelaide have got into the grand final with a four point victory, an absolute nail biter, an incredible contest here between Port and Glenelg. And Glenelg will get to live another day. They'll go back through the preliminary final against the Adelaide Crows. And Port Adelaide will go into the 2019 grand final.